on the starting grid. Round nine from deep holes of the German 1989 Formula 3 series. And watch for Wendlinger there at the bottom of your picture. He's in the yellow camel car, the blue and white car of Heinz Harald Frenzen, the 20 year old from München Gladbach. And away we go. And it's into the first bend. And it's Frenzen holding lead from Wendlinger as the field races through. Now we get a better shot of them. That's Wendlinger in second position. Heinz Harald Frenzen. First away, and they've got away cleanly. Nobody left on the grid. Harald uh, Schumacher has had a poor start. He's well down the field, expected to show strongly here this afternoon. As they go racing through 2,000 cc's, these Formula 3 cars, extremely lightweight and, of course, extremely fast. And they'll be racing to maximum speed here this afternoon. Wendlinger going through on curve three. Wendlinger, can he hold it? He can't. And Frenson's got it back again. And they're locked up wheel to wheel here. Frenson and uh, Wendlinger as they go out of our picture. And Frenson just lost it for a second in uh, curve three. Wendlinger went through on the inside. He held that lead for no more than a second as the field streams through the first of two chicanes here in front of us in the grandstand. And uh, dry conditions here as we look once again at the race leaders. Uh, Frenson in the blue and white in the Reynard and right on his tail is Karl Wendlinger, the Austrian protégé of Gerhard Berger. And it hasn't taken long, has it, here as we come round to the completion of lap one for these two arch rivals to continue their feud here in 1989. And already they've opened up daylight between themselves and the ensuing pack. Coming round then on lap two here at Deep Holtz, Frenzen leads, but just by two tenths of a second from the Austrian, Karl Wendlinger held the lead very briefly there on the first lap and lost it again to Frenzen, who started here in pole. Really is racing on a high at the moment, the man from München Gladbach. He's come here with high hopes, a big support team. And Karl Wendlinger, the Austrian, no love lost between these two. Locked in at the top of the championship after eight rounds. Just three points separating them, and will it be the same after the conclusion of today's race? Now looking down through the field, Schumacher, after that uh, deplorable start, has uh, come up quickly through the field. And into lap three on this very, very fast and short circuit, just 1.62 miles, as we said, sees these boys lapping at a consistent, well, they'll be doing top speed down there at about 180 kilometers an hour. And I should think when we get the fastest lap captions through, they'll be lapping here at around 155 kilometers per hour. Super quick, super fast, a wonderful dry track, warm conditions, as you can see there from our camera shot, head on as they come down towards us here. And we're on to lap three. And so far, mercifully, everybody's safely away in racing. No mishaps, but we're looking at the duel at the top of the field between Heinz Harald Frenzen. All the tremendous German protégés coming through in the 89 season, all of them young men, Schumacher, Frenzen, of course, Schmickler, Michael Roppers, Bartels, Jella, let's not forget any of these boys could still win the 1989 Formula 3 championship and tremendous prospects for the years to come as well. Many of these boys, of course, as we look, no change at the top of the field still, it's Frenzen holding off Wendlinger and he's beginning to put just a little bit of daylight between himself and the Austrian. These boys have started off in kart racing in the late 80s. Formula 3000 and now up to Formula 3. These lightweight cars of 2000 cc maximum capacity most of these boys running on VW engines. We'll tell you more about that as the race continues here. We're looking for the duel at the front of the pack there between Wendlinger and Frenzen, as it has so often been throughout this tremendously exciting 1989 season. Frenzen leads Wendlinger in second place. 0.6 seconds the gap between the front two. Frenzen holding a good line. He's come on in leaps and bounds this season. Still some question marks about his character over the full stretch but so far running an immaculate race early stages here as we come round to the completion of lap three at deep holtz the yellow car of
Wendlinger then on the far side. Two chicanes put into this circuit, just to make things rather more interesting. Wunsdorf, the other um, aerodrome circuit used in this series in Germany. And it was at Wunsdorf just uh, a few weeks ago where uh, we had a rain ruined round seven which was in fact black flagged after nine laps in torrential rain really horrendous racing conditions making for a very very hairy afternoon indeed but thank goodness the sun's out this afternoon and superb conditions for all these drivers the dry track and plenty of grip there for these boys and my goodness they need it because these machines are ultra lightweight and that makes them ultra fast so there we get our first look at the first six after five rounds of round nine five laps in the ninth race of the 1989 season Frenson leads from Wendlinger 1.1 seconds the gap now Bartles is up into third Schmickler down to fourth Sakowski Peter Sakowski in fifth place and what a wonderful season he's having remember this man is non-sponsored a private entrant and he's been with us on every round so far and in invariably he's been up amongst the top six and this is number two it's schumacher schumacher going through on the inside tremendous piece of driving as he outbreaks the number five michael ropes and schumacher moves up to fourth place so schumacher who was slow away from the grid one of the pre-race favorites and um, he certainly doesn't discount himself out of the uh, race for the 89 title but we're back with the blue and white car the Reynard of uh, race leader Frensen but Wendlinger is beginning to charge now you see the fastest round the fastest lap and it's 175 kilometers lapping at 175 that's about just under 115 miles per hour and my goodness me that is fast and Wendlinger has suddenly closed the gap on race leader Frensen. And now is he close enough perhaps to have a dart at the race leader? He's right up behind Frensen. As they come into the big chicane here in front of us on the main grandstand side of the aerodrome. Now Frensen just realising the danger. Pulls out a little bit special, a little bit extra. And once again I don't think Wendlinger is close enough to perhaps have a have a go we're on lap six and still the race order remains as it has from the off apart from perhaps two seconds on uh, lap one when Wendlinger got through and immediately retaken by Frensen so a man who started this afternoon in pole position leads the race as we come up to the second of two chicanes here and as you saw there, Frensen really being pressured from behind by Wendlinger now. Locking up the brakes on that last chicane. In they come to the main chicane here. Head on view from our camera position. You can see how close these two really racing right out on the limit they are. And I should think those two boys are absolutely loving it. They've had a tremendous run right through the summer of 1989. And now after, well, eight rounds competed, completed in this season, just three points separating these two drivers. Heinz Harald Fredsen from not too far away from here, München Gladbach, about 100 kilometers away to our west. And of course, he's here with a big fanatical following. And they're desperate to see the uh, man from West Germany hold off the challenge of his arch rival, the Austrian Wendlinger. Back in third place there, a brief shot of Bartels. Also driving a VW-powered Reynard. Still Heinz Harald Frensen. Imperturbable, the young man who's gaining in stature really week by week throughout the season. A quiet man, dedicated to his racing, determined to get to the very top of the tree. Formula 3, of course, for these boys. Just one step in the ladder to the ultimate dream, which is to race in Formula 1 Grand Prix. And his apprenticeship continues here, writing another chapter in the learning process as he leads around the Deep Holtz Aerodrome. 
in round nine of the German Formula 3 season. Heinz Hal Frenzen, 20 years old. But so far, an immaculate race being run as we look back down the field and Schumacher's having a charge once again. Schumacher, well, we saw him go past and he's gone past in exactly the same place again two laps later and makes further ground up the field. Schumacher in the Reynard, as so many of these top drivers are. Reynard chassis, VW powered engine. And after 10 rounds, after 10 laps, it's Frenson who leads Fendlinger, no change there. Bartels remains in third place, two and a half seconds behind the leader. Peter Zakowski there, he's in fourth place. Schumacher's up to fifth, and Schmickler drops back to sixth. The last manoeuvre we saw there, Schumacher going past Schmickler on the inside at the, uh, the left-hander at the bottom of the uh, main straight here at Diepholz. And look at that, somebody's in trouble. Well, my goodness me, as uh, some of those spectators were ready to make a rather rapid exit out, and that's what he thinks of that. And we're looking at the car there of Ralph Kellen as the number 22 in the Euphra Tark Aliko. That's a Russian-powered engine. And, well, that's a pretty unorthodox way to get back into the pits. This is obviously what happened. Out goes the uh, right front tyre, skating in on the... Uh, on the chassis. Well, that was uh, quick thinking of Kellner's because he actually motioned to the men in immediate danger to get out of the way. Here I come. And a nice 360 degree spin brings the car to a very tidy halt. Although I'm afraid the chassis was looking anything but tidy. Ralph Kellner's, his race is run. And it seems very much as if that's what caused it. Uh, he's in a little bit of trouble there. That's uh, Schmickler with some fairing loose on the back of the car. He's lost the rear spoiler. And I should think if he's going to continue racing, that will severely hamper, of course, his aerodynamics, and that's going to slow him down and put him down through the field. So uh, coming together there on uh, lap 11 at Depolt's Ralph Kellner's in spectacular fashion. And there we see the marshals just tidying up some of the debris which has been littering the track, but no uh, lasting damage done, just uh, a little bit of uh, bent bodywork to worry about, but... Ralph Kellen is doing superbly well to bring the car down the safety lane and a beautiful spin, bringing the car neatly to a standing stop. So Kellen is out on lap 11. We're back with race leader. He continues in uh, calm fashion up front, uh, probably unaware of the uh, goings on behind him. He certainly would have been aware of the uh, fairing lying around on this deep holt track but the marshals have been uh, quick vigilant they've done their job and we're racing once again in clean perfect conditions here well plenty of traction of course those tires have warmed up nicely now and Frenson is really flying Carl Wendlinger still holds the quickest lap here this afternoon but I wouldn't be surprised if Frenson is now not beginning to go even faster because as he locks up the front left wheel there you just saw a puff of blue smoke Frenson is giving every indication here this afternoon that whatever Wendlingen can pull out of the bag, Frenson is going to hold him off. Needs no motivation whatsoever, the 20-year-old from Mönchengladbach. And through he goes once again in front of us, past the pits. And someone else losing it there at the uh, left-hander at the end of the... Uh, Home straight here, it looks like Bayerlein, it is the number 51, it's Bayerlein, does well to keep it going. Frank Bayerlein back in the race, but he's lost a couple of places there, and uh, he's dropped well down the field. Bayerlein, I think we've seen in a previous round, also losing it, and, uh, and this is in fact how it happened. Wendlinger, of course, uh, passed au plus court. Hansel, Wendlinger, Bartels. Marker up to fourth place. Peter Sikowski is in fifth place. Ropes is holding on to sixth place. And the race order now. The engine is nirgendwo angeschlagen. Kann also weiterfahren. Wir machen gleich eine kleine Pause und melden uns dann wieder aus Diepholz. Das ist der Stand der Dinge nach fünf. Diepholz. Welcome back to Diepholz as you rejoin us here. The race leader unchanged 
Heinz Harald Fredson writing another impressive chapter in his racing apprenticeship. And still in hot pursuit of Fredson, the Austrian Karl Wendlinger. And somebody else who's fallen by the wayside, looking rather disconsolately at his machine. Unfortunately, from my uh, position here in the grandstands, I can't see the number. But uh, it's one of the tail-enders, and this is the gentleman at the moment who's writing the headlines this afternoon at Deep Holtz. And the fastest uh, lap now coming in from Michael Bartels. And he's taken the record away from Wendlinger, 175.848 kilometres per hour. That's after 55 minutes of the race here on lap 12. So Bartels putting in a charge, but can he move up from third place and catch Wendlinger? And the question, can Wendlinger catch this man, Heinz Harald Frensen? Frensen going past the tail-enders now, and this may possibly be where the race could be won and lost. It's Frensen now being held up by traffic. He doesn't want to be in amongst that pack for too long. Wants to get some clear air in front of him. And he's OK there. Oh, my goodness, but he's not there. Now he's clipped the nose cone of one of the tail-enders. Keeps it going, Frensen. And the cowlings come off the front of the car. That holds up Wendlinger behind. He slowed up, Frensen drives through, sails through, not even probably, well, not concerned, I should think, but probably not even aware of the confusion he's caused behind him. I wonder if the director will let us have another look at that. Here it comes again. Yes, well, in fact, it happened just before there because Frensen was carving his way through the tail-enders and absolutely stuck his uh, car right in front of the tail-ender there who uh, locks up the brakes, caused Wendlinger almost to pile into him from behind. There goes the nose cone of the tail end. Frensen's through, going wide there at the top of your picture. But what a piece of irresponsible driving that was from the race leader, cutting right in front of a tail ender when really there was no need for that whatsoever. And the ensuing pack are all held up as bits and pieces go flying off the nose cone of the white car there. Frensen is through, he's not concerned. But what was the young man thinking of there? And that was a typical rush of blood from Frensen, still only 20 years old. Well, he almost seemed to have the race in his pocket, but then coming up to uh, the first piece of uh, driving he'd had to do in quite some while, he's led from the front and carving his way through the tail enders. A little impatience there, cutting right in front. And my goodness me, it almost threatens to do it again. Well, the adrenaline's really pumping here now with Harold Frensen, our race leader, as he almost goes for an action replay in front of tail ender number 10 and threatens to charge somebody else off the track but the uh, as we're looking at Frensen coming through now and he's quite uh, merrily sailing on his way and he's increased the lead between him and second place it's still Wendlinger but he's dropped back considerably after that uh, that uh, almost uh, coming together on the last lap when Frensen forced his way right in front of a tail ender. He braked sharply, of course, otherwise he was piling into the back of Frensen's car and Wendlinger was the loser. Wendlinger caught in the pack, nowhere to go, and uh, he's dropped back now over two and a half seconds behind Heinz Harald Frensen and that may just be the incident which wins and loses this race. Round nine of the German Formula 3 season and once again we've had controversy here during the race on screen sport some of the best motor racing we've seen from this circuit the German Formula 3 season for 1989 going down in history as one of the very best ever and we're enjoying exciting racing here in the sunshine but I wonder if uh, Frensen will in fact well no uh, Marshall's flags are being shown but um, I was wondering if uh, Frensen might not be in a little trouble after the race for that particular manoeuvre because it really was irresponsible he uh, was passing the tail ender he knew exactly where he was the tail ender was uh, allowing Frensen a clear run through into the chicane and suddenly for no apparent reason whatsoever Frensen just shut the door and we've got a black flag out now I wonder who this is for certainly not that man possibly that man there with uh, some uh, rear end damage yes well he's lost his uh, rear spoiler uh, certainly lost most of it and it's uh, Schmickler in the uh, Reynard who is possibly being black flagged uh, possibly it could be number 21 in fact I think it is it's Wagner it's Wagner he's got some rear end damage and as you can see unlike Schmickler's car it's, uh, I think we'll find behind that caption there next to the gentleman with the black flag, the number of 21, is it? I can see from here it is. 
And it's Wagner who's being black flagged off the circuit because with that um, spoiler hanging just by the barest of threads, in fact, as two of the uh, mechanics just uh, rip it off the uh, off the body there. Uh, Mark Wagner in the Eufra Tark. That's too dangerous to continue when these boys are doing close to 120 miles an hour. That could very easily fly off into the face of one of the uh, pursuing cars, and we don't want that. So black flag there against the race car number 21, Wagner. He's into the pits, but that's not going to affect the leaderboard because up at the front. The race order remains unchanged. Heinz Harald Frenzen leading the German Formula 3 Series. Winner already of two races this summer. And Schumacher, who had such a disastrous start off the grid, our cameras didn't pick it up as we concentrated on the race into Turn 1. But he's battling back through the field to add points as well to his charge to the top of the championship. But I have to say here that Frenson is looking comfortable. And after that uh, controversial incident where he profited, of course, from the bunching up behind him as uh, Frenson, having initiated all sorts of problems for the people behind, goes sallying forth and uh, just uh, almost losing it for a second there. He's certainly not easing up by any stretch of the imagination. Goes wide just onto the grass as he comes into the chicane. Here he is. Now coming up to Schmickler, and you can see, in fact, that's uh, a clear sign of how Schmickler's been slowed up by the damage there to the aerodynamics of the car. No doubt that's cost him, uh, probably been costing him at least three to four seconds for the last uh, few laps, and uh, he's about to be lapped by race leader Frenson. And I'm just looking away from our camera position here as we see uh, Frenson coming through once again to lap Another car who's uh, had a little restyling done to it, the number 50 of Thorsten Vals. Frensen, as our caption tells you, the race leader. Alongside him, taking Vals on the inside. He's lost a nose cone. You can see it quite clearly there as they come into the home stretch once again onto lap 13. And it looks very much as if it's almost becoming a procession now for Frensen. He's moving up to over two and a half seconds ahead of second place man Wendlinger, who's just hanging on to second place from Bartles. But as I speak, the real race is happening behind us. Frenson we're concentrating on at the moment, but Frank Bartles is having a charge. Already posted the fastest lap here. He's taken it away from Wendlinger. And Wendlinger is slowing down. Wendlinger is clearly slowing down. We're looking once again here as the uh, pack come up to lap Thorsten Vals. Of course, Frenson's already cleaned through. Schumacher. Frank Bartels, I think he's up into second place. We'll find that he's overtaken Wendlinger. Carl Wendlinger is clearly slowing up, and in fact, news comes through from the pits that Wendlinger is having handling problems. Uh, he's keeping it going, but we hear that Wendlinger is indicating he's got some suspension problems, and he's dropped back to third. There, in fact, you see it. Wendlinger in the yellow camel car, the 14 of Carl Wendlinger. And there, confirmation on the caption, Bartels is through in a second place. Frentzen leads, Bartels second, Wendlinger third. Schumacher hangs on to fourth. Sikowski fifth here, as he has been since lap run. And now coming into the points reckoning is Frank Biella on uh, sixth position there. But I should think that this race is more or less run now as we come on to the penultimate lap. Schumacher, can he find the speed to get any closer? Frank Bartels is in a second place. Wendlinger dropping back. Now he's got a battle just to hold on to third. He's got problems, we hear, with the suspension. Heinz Harald Frensen, surely the München Gladbacher is on his way to maximum points here at Deep Holtz. His third series win, will it be further consolidation of his position at the head of the Drivers' Championship here in the 1989 German Formula 3 season? Race leader Heinz Harald Frensen just has to keep it going here. On the last lap, and there it is, the chequered flag. Heinz Harald Frensen is the winner in the Reynard, his third victory of the 1989 season. The Reynard Delara is victorious once again. It's a hat trick of wins, a maximum 20 points for the young man. Heinz Harald Frensen, the winner of round nine in the 1989 Formula 3 series.